Is it cheaper to build an iPhone from scratch using only AliExpress? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Inside this, we have every single part needed to build an iPhone 11 from scratch that I chose this phone because almost everyone can make this phone. It's easy and cheap. I made sure to get the cheapest yet highest reviewed products from them because, well, I don't want to use them and find out they don't work, which could definitely happen. If this works, I'll let you guys know if it's cheaper and I'll actually drop the links to everything I bought here in case you want to try this yourself. I open these up and make sure we actually got what we ordered. There's actually a lot more to ordering this than I thought there was. You have to order a lot of the small parts individually, and the price was really starting to add up. Let's take a look at what's inside. Here's the phone's housing. The seller listed it as original quality, so we'll check that during assembly. Next up is the display. We'll test it later once everything's set up. Hopefully, it's in perfect condition. This is the battery. We'll test it later. Here's the charging flex. It looks fine, but these cheap ones can be hit or miss. We'll test it once everything's wired up. And here's the back camera. It actually looks decent for the price. We'll find out later if it can match the real iPhone quality. And here we've got the motherboard, safely packed inside a plastic cover. Along with it, there's the front camera and the ear speaker flex strip. This is the most important and definitely the most expensive part in this entire build. Without this, all those other parts are just pieces of metal and glass. Here's the SIM tray. Setting that aside. Next, the SIM slot. Now we have the small shields and screws, all packed separately. And finally, the screwdrivers and opening tools. First, we're taking the housing out of the plastic cover. Let's take a closer look around it. Check it out from the side and the back. Everything looks clean and ready to use. Now let's remove this sticker on the logo. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more builds. Check this out. See all the gum and debris inside the housing? I genuinely think this is the original Apple housing, but it's used. Let's take a closer look at everything inside. Here's the power button, which also comes with a flash. Next, the volume buttons, the charging flex, and the Taptic engine. Everything's neatly packed, and you can see how simple it is to identify each part. Pretty straightforward. You can do this yourself. Now, I'm just placing the housing on the mat ready for assembly. Doesn't look good. The motherboard's in pretty bad shape. I really don't like what I'm seeing here. The front camera strip has the Apple logo and serial number, so it's definitely genuine. I just hope the face ID is still functional. The ear speaker also has the Apple logo and serial number, confirming it's genuine as well. Everything looks original. That's always a good sign before reassembly. Now, I'm carefully placing the motherboard into the housing. It needs to align perfectly with the frame and screw points, so I'm making sure it sits firmly in place without applying too much pressure. Using a tweezer, I'm making sure all the flex strips are brought above the motherboard, so connecting them later will be easier. Once that's done, I connect the power button's flex connector on the top side of the motherboard as the final step in this part. Next, 
I'm connecting the SIM slot to the motherboard. It has to align precisely with the connector, so I'm positioning it carefully and pressing it in until it clicks securely into place. A proper fit here ensures stable network detection once the phone is powered on. Now, I'm securing the SIM slot to the motherboard with its screws. Tightening them evenly is important to keep the slot perfectly aligned and prevent any flex or connection issues later on. Here, I'm connecting the charging flex cable to the motherboard. While doing that, I noticed we forgot to order the wireless charging coil, but that's not a big issue. It can be installed later, and it doesn't cause the panic logo, so we're safe for now. Charging flex cable I ordered, it comes with a Taptic engine and charging port already attached to the housing, so we won't need those extra parts. Here's Apple logo and serial number on the back camera. Honestly, I'm surprised I managed to get an original camera from AliExpress for such a low price. It's a bit dirty, and I can see some carbon corrosion around the connector, probably from a water damage device. Still, let's hope it performs well once we test it. Now, I'm connecting the battery to the motherboard and carefully positioning it in the housing. Ensuring it sits correctly is crucial for a secure fit and proper power delivery. Here, I'm connecting the ear speaker to the motherboard and positioning it properly in the housing. A precise fit ensures clear audio and prevents any connection issues later. We will fix it to the display later. Now, I'm connecting the display to the motherboard. This display is actually the cheapest one I could find, and honestly, it's in pretty rough condition. The peel-off sticker looks dirty, and overall, I don't like what I'm seeing here. But for the price, it's worth testing. So let's just hope it powers on and works properly. Here, I'm peeling off the protective sticker wrapped around the side of the hub safe area. I'm doing it slowly to avoid leaving any residue or damaging the surface. It's a small detail, but taking the time to clean it up properly makes the overall build look neat and professional. Just as I expected, this display isn't working. There's no response or backlight when I try to power it on. It's disappointing but not surprising considering the poor condition it arrived in. Sometimes with these low-cost replacement parts, it's a gamble, and this one clearly didn't make it. Now, I'm connecting the new display to the motherboard. This one looks much better in quality, clean connectors, solid frame, and no visible damage. I'm aligning each flex cable carefully and pressing them in one by one to ensure a perfect connection. Once everything's secured, We'll power it on to check the results. I've just connected the charging cable, and the Apple logo appears right away. That's a great sign. It means the new display and motherboard connections are working perfectly.
The phone is now up and running perfectly. The display looks great, the touch response is smooth, and all the components seem to be working just as they should. Overall, it's performing exactly how I hoped. But I did notice that this phone had a lot of third-party applications installed, so I'll need to format it completely before doing any further testing. Once that's done, I'll upload a full checking and review video soon, so stay tuned for that. And now, let's go over the total cost of this repair and see how much it actually took to bring this phone back to life. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more detailed repair and testing videos coming up next. The total cost for this entire repair came to just under $120, including the display, housing, motherboard, and all other parts. Considering how well the phone is performing now, that's an incredible value. For less than $120,